Welcome to the EXP Group. Today in our discussion of ACCA Paper F2 Management Accounting, we're going to talk about operating statements. Now this builds on the previous discussion we had concerning variance analysis. Variances which uh, explain the divergence between budgeted numbers and actual results achieved. The operating statement brings all of that together and explains the difference between profit that was budgeted and expected with actual profit achieved. If we look at the uh, same uh, scenario that was, that was uh, presented earlier in these express notes, then the operating statement um, based on an absorption costing method would begin with the budgeted profit amount of $33,000. This $33,000 comes from 1,000 units budgeted to be sold times a standard profit of $33 per unit. That becomes our starting point. Now we take, uh, we add or subtract the various uh, variances relating to sales volume, sales price, and so on. In the previous discussion, we had calculated these figures. And now we're just um, assembling them in such a way that we can modify our budgeted profit by the what, what amounts to adverse sales volume and price variances. And then the net of our various uh, cost variances. If we list them between the favorables and the adverse, we come out to a net adverse cost variances of 3,325. And if we deduct this from our adjusted budgeted profit above, we will arrive at an actual profit of $23,275. We can do the same thing. We can build an operating statement based on marginal costing. In this case, our starting point will be the budgeted contribution, which is 1,000 units budgeted sales times $48, which is our expected or standard contribution per unit. One needs to go back to the scenario, the underlying scenario, to verify these numbers. And starting with $48,000 as budgeted contribution, we have to deduct the sales volume and sales price variances. Notice we have to be consistent. The sales volume variance calculated according to the marginal costing method was different from that used above in the absorption costing method. And it will produce an adjusted budgeted contribution of $40,850. Then we have the various cost variances that need to be deducted. Materials, labor, and variable overhead variances. Notice that the fixed overhead variances do not appear in our calculation of the variances here. And that we have to arrive at an actual contribution figure, which in this case is 39525 At that level, the fixed overheads do not enter into the picture because we have to be faithful to the definition of contribution. It's only afterwards that we have to uh, adjust our below the contribution line for our fixed overheads. Now we know that the actual fixed overheads came out to 17,000. Our fixed overheads budgeted are 16,500 and therefore our fixed overheads expenditure variance is $500. It should be noted that the fixed overhead expenditure variance is the only one which is recognized in the marginal costing system. And therefore, at the end of the day, when we make the adjustment and we show our actual fixed overheads and deduct them from our actual contribution, we end up with our 
actual profit figure of 22,520. So to summarize, please bear in mind that when we use the two methods, the marginal costing operating statement starts with the standard contribution, unlike absorption costing, which st starts with standard um, profit. And the marginal costing, in addition, recognizes only the fixed overhead expenditure variance. Our final topic in the express notes relating to paper F2 uh, concerns short-term decision-making techniques. And here the candidate should be familiar with so-called cost-volume-profit analysis, which is more popularly known as break-even analysis. Now, we've mentioned this concept before when we were talking about total costs in a business consisting of fixed costs and variable costs. In fact, we defined contribution in marginal costing as being, uh, on a per unit basis, as being the selling price minus the variable cost per unit of, 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 the, of the good. Selling price minus variable costs gave us a contribution figure and that contribution as the name suggests is the amount that we can put towards covering the fixed costs in a business. Therefore if the contribution is equal to the fixed costs profit will equal zero and therefore we will be by definition at the break-even point. Now we can see this graphically if we scroll down here to the picture where the break-even point would correspond to this crossover uh, point where sales revenue has grown to a point where they're equal to the total costs in the business. So there's zero profit at that point. We can also see, or we can uh, identify the contribution at that point. The contribution will be the revenues minus the fixed costs. In other words, it will be this distance here. So our contribution, let me just say that again, the contribution will be defined as our selling price or times the number of units will be our total revenues minus the total variable costs at that moment. The total variable costs will be here and therefore the difference Let's call that total variable costs. The difference will be our total contribution. The candidate can check and see graphically here and proportionately that this distance defined here by the black line is going to be exactly equal to the distance here between the fixed cost line and the x-axis. In other words, there is equality between contribution and fixed costs. And this is, again, the break-even point as shown in, in the graph. Now, marginal costing is also useful in that it can uh, give us um, the relevant costs necessary to make short-term decisions with, re with regard to accepting or rejecting uh, special orders or contracts um, on a, on a, on a short-term basis. This is important because the idea is that fixed costs are not relevant to us in the short term because they exist anyway. They cannot be avoided and therefore we could price our um, special contracts in the short term based purely on variable costs. The uh, relevant costing is also helpful in terms of determining whether we should make or buy um, certain components in our production capacity, in, in our production uh, operations. 
So it's, it's making a, a relevant comparison based on whether we should produce something in-house or we should outsource it. And finally, whether we should discontinue business operations, a disinvestment decision can also be made based on relevant costs. Where limiting factors exist in production, then there are other techniques uh, which uh, can be used in order to determine what the optimal mix or production plan should be for an operation in order to maximize profit or contribution, for example, in working around the limiting factors, also known as bottlenecks. These techniques are explored uh, in specific numerical terms um, in the classroom. Linear programming, for example, provides an additional technique in being able to determine what the optimal um, production plan should be for a company. Thank you.